Good morning friends, welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss various data types in Python in detail. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. We have numbers, string, list, tuple, set, dictionary. These are the data types we have in Python. In this video, I want to discuss about numbers and string data types in detail. In the coming videos, I will discuss about list, tuple, set and dictionary. Now first let me discuss about the numbers. In numbers data type, we have integer, we have float, we have complex and we also have the boolean variables. Okay. Now first let me talk about the integer. Now the integer, suppose if you want to assign an integer value to the variable a, then you can write a is equal to some 15. If you want to find the data type of this variable a, because python is dynamically typed, means once you initialize the value to the variable, during the runtime, it will specify what data type it is. Meaning is that it is not statically typed. Meaning is that during the compile time, the user no need to specify data type of the variable. If it is a C long base, we need to first declare the variable, then only we can assign the value. Suppose if you want to declare a variable called A, which is an integer, then you want to assign the value 15, then you will write like int A then a is equal to 15 or if you want to write in a single statement you can write int a is equal to 15 but when it comes to the python we can directly initialize a value to the variable called a now if i want to find what data type it is whether it is an integer whether it is a float whether it is a complex number or it is a boolean you can use type and you write a then it will tell you what data type this variable a now, if you execute the statement, it will print in a statement called int, meaning is that this data type of the variable a is an integer. I hope it is clear for you. Now, if you want to assign a real number, okay, suppose let's take that b is equal to 15.25. Now, this b is a float data type. If you want to know the data type of the variable b, you can simply write type b then it will print the output as float for you. Is it clear? Similarly, if you want to assign a complex number to the variable, you can simply write c is equal to, where c is the name of the variable, and you can write 15j. Is it clear? Because the complex number is in the form of a plus b j. Is it clear? So, if I simply write 15j, and if I want to know the type, then I can write type C. Okay, now let me discuss about the Boolean variable for you. Okay, the Boolean variables can have either true or false. Is it clear? The true you should write capital T or UE. And for false, you need to write capital F, A, L, S, C. -E. So, this is the boolean variables is it clear suppose let's take that simply i will give you one statement d is equal to 10 greater than 9 now you tell me whether 10 is greater than 9 or not yes then if you print d then it will display the output as true for you because 10 is greater than 9 so the condition is true if the condition is true, true will be assigned to this D. Is it clear? Now you can ask me one more thing. Suppose let's take that I have E is equal to 15 and then I am writing plus D. 15 where D is having the value true. Am I right or wrong? Now it will be 15 plus 1, it will be 16 if you print, if you print E because I am writing this, otherwise let me write here. Okay, E is equal to 15 plus D and if you are printing E, then the value 16 will be displayed for you. 
Is it clear? Because look at, let me discuss again. D is equal to 10 greater than 9. So this condition is true. If the condition is true, true will be assigned. So that is what true is printing for you. Then E is equal to 15 plus D. True is nothing but in a binary number it is 1. False it will be a 0. So 15 plus 1 it will be 16. Now let me discuss these things practically in the Jupyter notebook for you. Now A is equal to 10. If I write statement type of A, as 10 is an integer value, the 10 we are assigning to a variable A, then the data type of the variable will be an integer. You look, can look at the output. It is giving the output as int. So the data type of the variable is an integer. Similarly, we will discuss about float variable. Suppose if I give 10.5. If I write a statement called type of B, then it will display the output as float because we are storing a real number in the variable B and if we are trying to access what is the data type, then it will give you the float. Similarly, if I want to store a complex number, suppose 10J, then if I write statement type C, then it will display the output for me as complex because it is a complex number. Now let me discuss about the Boolean variables. Let me write a statement called D is equal to true. Okay. Then if I write type D, then it will return the output as bool. Now similarly, if I write print D, then we will see what is the output we will get. Okay, now we are getting the output as true. Now, if I say print D plus 1, let's see what will be the output. It will be 2. Why? Already I have discussed the Boolean value for the or the binary value for the true is 1 and for false it is 0. So, as we are given d is equal to true so it will be 1 plus 1 it will be 2 if you want to verify for the false you can verify it some e is equal to false plus 1 and if you print e then you will get the output as 1 you can look at here Okay, so this is the way the Boolean variables will work. Now let me discuss about the string data type. Now in the string data type, you can give the variable name. Suppose let's take that I'm giving the variable name as s. s is equal to, you can write within the double quotes or within the single quote. Suppose let's take that I'm writing Parnika. Now you know that the string is a collection of characters. So P will be stored in a zero index. A will be stored in the index one because always the array index will start from zero. Okay. R will be stored in the index two. N will be stored in the index three. I will be stored in index four. K will be stored in index five. And A will be stored in index six. Is it clear? So, S is equal to, you can write within the double quotes or within the single quotes. Okay. Then if you write, if you want to find the length of the string, then you can write len and you can give the name of the variable, where the where of the variable is s. So if you give this one, then how many characters are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it will display the output as 7. So this is the length of the string. So it will be useful for you to find the length of the string. Okay. Now, if you want to find a specific character which is there at a particular index, then you can write S yes of 2. Now, look at this one where S yes is the name of the variable and then 2 is the index. At the index 2, which character is there? R. So, it will display the output as R. Now, if you want to find a collection of characters from particular index to the particular index. Suppose if I say variable name, then from 2, 
I want to get for up to 5. Okay, then it will display R, it will display N, it will display I. Then you can ask me, sir, you said start from 2 and go up to 5. So, at 2, R is there. At index 3, N is there. At index 4, I is there. At index 5, K should be there. But why you are not displaying K? Remember one thing. If you say up to index 5, it will give the characters up to the index 4 only. So, if you say starting location and the ending location, the ending location it will not give. Now, remember one thing. Start from the 2, I want to display all the characters up to the ending. Then I can write 2 and I will not specify up to end what it is. Then it will display the characters which are there from the index 2 and up to the end. Is it clear? Are you able to understand like this? You can display all the characters starting from a particular index. Okay. Similarly, if you say that variable name 2 and you don't know ending just if you specify 8 then what will be the output starting from the 2 index so it will display r it will display n it will display i it will display k it will display a now you can say that sir when you said up to index 5 what are the characters are there up to index 4 it is displayed so when you said a what are the characters which is there up to index 7 it should display but why you are displaying up to the 6 only because after 6 there is no index and there is no character so it will display r i nika okay is it clear similarly i want to tell few more things now if i want to find the last character in the string okay then meaning is that last character is a if i want to find it i can find it to two ways i can give the name of the variable and i can say six because i know that a is there at the index six this is okay it will give you the a but if i want to find the last character because if it is Parnika, I know that up to index 6 is there. But if it is a large string, how you will find the last index and then you will write here. That will be difficult. So, instead of that one, you can specify minus 1. Okay. If you specify minus 1, then it will give you the last character. If you specify minus 2, it will give you the last but 1, which is k. If you say yes of minus 3, then it will give you the i. Is it clear? So, if you represent the negative index, then it will start from the ending. Okay. If you give the positive number, it will start from the starting. Is it clear? Now, you want to convert into an uppercase and lowercase, meaning is that you want to display Parnika in the uppercase and then you want to display in the lowercase. Then you can write variable name dot lower. Then it will print Parnika in the lower case. If you want to display all the characters in an upper case, then you can write S dot upper. Then it will print all the characters in an upper case. Is it clear? Similarly, let's take that one more thing. Okay. Now you have Parnika, you want to print it as Barnika. Instead of P, you want to make it as B. Then what you will say, you will say that, sir, you want to keep B at the index 0. So you will say that, sir, you keep S of 0 is equal to B, character B. Then, but in place of P, it will become B. Why you will think I can agree? Suppose let's take that there is a variable a is equal to 10. In place of 10, if you want to store 15, then again you will write a is equal to 15. Then it will be changing. But if you write s of 0 is equal to b, then a lot of people think that it will become barnica. It is wrong. Why it is that it is not immutable? It will give an error for you. The strings you are not immutable. You cannot change the particular character in a string. Is it clear? So now let me discuss these things practically in Jupyter Node.
Now I will take a variable called s and I will assign a string to it which is Parnika. If I want to find the length of the string then I can use a function called len and I can give an input as name of the variable which is s. Now you can look at it will give the output as 7 which is nothing but number of characters in the string Parnika which is 7 par is 3 n i k a total we have 7. Now if I want to display a particular character which is there in a particular index. Now if I want to print the character which is there at the index 2. Already I have discussed that the array index will start from 0. So 0, 1, 2. So at the index 2 character R is there. Now we can verify whether we are getting the output is R or not. Yes we are getting the output as R. Now if I want to print the characters from 2 to 5 meaning is that I want to display all the characters which is there from index 2 to index 5. Now you can see the output will be R, N, okay and then I because at the index 2 R is there, at index 3 N is there, at index 4 I will be there. It will not give you the output as R, N, I, K. Why it is already I have discussed in the whiteboard because it will display the characters up to fourth index only. If you specify here n as the index then it will display the characters up to n minus one index only. If you want to display the characters from first index to the last index then you can specify one then you no need to specify the end index then it will display right from the first index to the last index now if you want to change the a character which is already assigned so suppose let's take this instead of parnika i want to make it as barnika okay now at the index 0 i want to assign b now we will see what will be the output Look at here, we are getting an error called string object does not support item assignment. Already I have discussed that strings are immutable. We cannot modify them. Now, if I want to find the lost character and I can give minus 1, okay, we can verify it. What will be the output? See, I got A which is the lost character in the string. If I want to find the lost my but 1, I can give minus 2. See, we got the k. Now, if I want to convert the all the characters into the upper case, then I can give like this. Yes, dot upper. See, all the characters are converted into an upper case. I hope you have understood all the concepts related to data types such as number and strings. If you still have any doubts related to this concept, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.